Experiencing everything life has to offer is paramount for martial arts development. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Let's talk about the life and times of Master Chotoku Kian. As he was one of the masters attending the legendary meeting of the masters in 1936, one could easily name him one of the most important karate masters of all time, or at least of the past century. Master Kian was born in 1870 in a family that held a high rank in the nobility in Shuri. This meant his family lost a lot during that time and it was right back then that the Meiji restoration took place. At the age of uh, 20, he was able to learn karate under the famous experts of the time, like Matsumura Kosaku or uh, Ito Suanko. Take a look at this photo. See, he was said to have been weak as a child, and even when fully grown, he still had a small physique. But as is often the case, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. More on that at the very end of the video. You're looking at one of the greatest warriors of his day. By the time he was 30, he was considered an expert in all forms of Okinawan combat he had studied. You can imagine that not many people believe this, so he was challenged often, and he had to fight frequently. However, if we're to believe Okinawan karate historians, he was never beaten in these fights. As a small man, he would train his speed and kicking ability, fighting as an excellent counter-based fighter. However, don't think he couldn't literally throw down against larger opponents either, as there is a famous incident where he tossed a hulk of a man off a bridge. You see, Kian was 40 at the time, and he crossed paths with Matsuda, a big guy, strong like an ox. With a nasty personality, Master Kian took it upon himself to tell the brute to leave the people of the village alone. But Matsuda instantly challenged our hero. Now, Matsuda knew Kian, but he was convinced the tiny man could do little to hurt the behemoth. Matsuda charged Kian like a bull, but Kian simply evaded the attack and followed up with a powerful kick, launching Matsuda off the bridge and into the Hija River. Kian taught karate in school and in the police station. He would take his students to perform demonstrations in the region and also teach them traditional Okinawan dancing. Master Kian was not only known for his fighting skills either. He had virtues as well as sins, meaning he lived life to the full. By the way, if you like this video and want others to find it too, then punching that like button would be colorful. You see, he did not just encourage his students to train, he also told them to engage in other activities, like drinking and visiting the local brothel. His reasoning was that experiencing everything life has to offer is paramount for martial arts development. He was even known to train his students at this very brothel. I guess the times were different back then. Now, I know Funakoshi said, do not think karate is only in the dojo, but I feel he had something else in mind. Now Motobu on the other hand, seems he did have some sympathy for this way of thinking. As he said, it is important for the karateka to drink heavily and engage in other fun activities, otherwise their karate will lack character. Now they were cousins, so maybe it ran in the family. Other examples of Kian's training methods including him telling his students to stop using lanterns to light their way so they could develop their night vision. They would train at night on uneven terrain and Kian would even throw water on the ground to make it more difficult. This is how he made his students train their kata. I have been playing with the idea to go into the woods near my house to train kata there. If you like to see that, let me know. Chotoko Kian loved cockfighting too. He was often seen carrying his prize fighting birds with him. One time he found himself in a situation where he was attacked by a group of youngsters. While holding his bird with one arm, he proceeded to defeat the group using only his feet and his one free arm. Now a final story I want to share with you is the one in 1930, when Kian's demonstration of karate somehow resulted in a challenge from Chinzo Ishida, judo instructor of the Taipei police headquarters. Kian, now 60, agreed to the challenge, but he did have one condition. He knew the judoka would throw him and he said he didn't want to get his vest dirty. So he asked if it was okay if they fought topless. Of course this was because he didn't want the judoka to be able to take a firm grip to apply his throwing techniques. When the two men faced each other, they kept their distance for some time, sizing each other up. Then suddenly Kian closed in, thrusting his thumb in into the side of Ishida's mouth and fiercely gripping his cheek. With a kick to the knee, he knocked Ishida to the ground and followed him down. Kneeling astride the judoka, he delivered a punch to the solar plexus, 
thereby ending the fight. The judo instructor was so impressed by this karate that he wanted Kian to teach him. Kian Shotoku was able to perform at peak physicality well into his 60s and early 70s, making him truly a lifelong karate expert. Although Kian survived the invasion of Okinawa in 1945, he was severely weakened and he died in September of that same year. What do you guys think of this colorful karate master? Comment below, let me know. If you want to learn more about the masters present at that legendary meeting, click here for a video about Master Shiroma. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day. And as always, thanks for watching. Chuck Norris can judge a book by its cover.